the one of the um, reasons a, a year ago for disorder related to Black Lives Matter and uh, the, the death of George Floyd, um, the, the court case there recently in the States being resolved. Um, you're just checking the room. Yes, well, I am actually. You I'm can just, listen to uh, the question I'm at the just, same time, hopefully. Um, actually, I wonder if, I think we, we, do we want to be yeah, a little further now, over there? I think if we go da right down to the bottom, we're, we're actually cutting across now. Okay. So we need to go there and then come round past Nettlecombe. So we would have gone round the top there. Okay, so. but we get down so, to, we yeah. get down, let's just have a look, down yeah. to Nettlecombe and a bit of a steep incline here, but... Uh, and then round, round past the house or round the front of the house and then join. Teamwork. Yep, I, I think Very important. <laughs> um, so um, the, yeah. the connection I wanted though to make, um, and um, it, it was, was relating to um, the, um, issues of, of race, um, not just in society but also in, in policing, and um, how um, how policing, you know, policing is not yet a as d diverse a community as society as a whole. No. Um, uh, not just in ethnicity, but in gender and in, in a number of other ways. It is, it appears, mm. getting better. But um, what? Um, what thoughts do you have on, on yeah, that sort of it, area? It, uh, I, I've lived with race issues now for most of my career. I, I, I say I worked overseas before I joined the police. I came back from Africa. I spoke a bit of Arabic. I, I tend to get drawn into work um, that involved different ethnicities in, in policing terms, you know, because I get called up, I started at Kensington, I used to get called up to deal with any Arab issues that you um, were, were bubbling away, of which there were quite a few. Yes. Um, and so I've always had an interest in, in the cultural side of policing, both internal and external. And, and um, I took a job after I'd been an inspector a few years, I, I took a job at Scotland Yard and I was responsible for race issues in the Met. I was the Preeb McPherson, yes. I was it. Yes. Um, and subsequently, I've led the work on prevent, um, set up the first prevent policy in, in policing. So I, I've been very immersed in it. I wrote the first hate crime manual uh, in policing. I, I did a stop and search review. So I, I've lived with the issues and I, and there's no doubt police have, have moved on a long way. The overt racism that existed uh, when I first joined, and it was overt at times, very overt, was, you know, it is, is not non-existent, but it certainly won't be apparent to someone like me, whereas it would have been in the past. Um, uh, but do I think there's still structural or institutional racism? I do. Um, I think... If you just look at the definition that McPherson drew up, it is, you know, there's almost like no way we, we're not institutionally racist. Now, some colleagues understandably don't like the terminology and it, it's very pejorative. It's, it's, it does put, uh, make people think, I'm not racist. Well, of course, it's not about them. It's about the way the organisation thinks and operates and, and, and its own internal cultures that that exclude and make life more difficult for others. And, and I think it exists. Um, uh, what we have to do is recognise that. And then all of us constantly ask ourselves in what way, you know, can we, can we um, identify it and what can we do constructively to, to, to deal with those race issues? Um, uh, and, and we owe it to not just yeah, we owe it to our community, but we owe it also to uh, those who... Well, to society. Yeah, we, society we, we, to, we owe it. To, but also uh, to those in the, in the service to be able to give the best service. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, so, uh, so there's a training need there. Um, to, because, um, you know, um, in, in, in my experience, uh, uh, not that that's necessarily the best um, um, judgment, but 99.99% um, .99 of... Um, police officers, police staff, those in the policing community wants to do the exactly. right thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, there are yeah. the rotten apples. But so well, there I, is. A... I, I, I don't wholly subscribe to rotten apples. I do see behaviours becoming a norm. So stop and search a good example where 
where some forces have no culture of stop and search and others it is writ in their DNA and, and you know um, uh, and when it's writ in their DNA you know, stop and, you're judged on how you do your stop and search you get you know, it, it's it's used less rigorously less yes. less focused and the evidence base is very clear if you go into a very defined area where the problem is very clear stop and search works as a general means of crowd control almost you know societal control it has more detrimental effects you know use it wisely and 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 i still think that's a lesson for policing that hasn't always landed use stop and search very wisely it's a it's a very powerful tool important tool but it's not to be used as a sort of general means of control of the streets.